Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks for having me. I can't believe you don't have a, like a black leather jacket on this morning and sort of a hey! or something like that. Or oh, you're too young probably to remember Fonzie. No, I, I know, I know Fonzie. Yeah, Fonzie. Happy Days played almost on repeat my whole childhood. Mm. Um, yeah, no, that was a favourite. Okay. I love the Fonzie flat. Well, what is the Fonzie flat? Because we know the granny flat. So what's the Fonzie flat? Well, it's basically it's where Fonzie lived. He lived above the garage in a little self-contained unit. Um, that, yeah, sits above the garage, has its own kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and, and almost acts as a unit on top of a suburban house. So do you see an opportunity for Fonzie Flats in Brisbane? Massive, massive opportunity because um, we've got a rental crisis. Everyone talks about it. The fastest growing type of housing accommodation between censuses was one and two bedroom dwellings. And yet they're really hard to build because you can imagine a big building, it takes years, three four years to get a, a, a unit from idea to someone living in it, whereas a Fonzie flat, that can be built in three, six months. It, it would immediately solve the housing crisis in, in Australia and Brisbane. So paint me a picture of the kind of house that exists with a, with a garage where you see the Fonzie flat living. Yeah, sure. So if you can imagine it, it's, it's like a, a 70 square metres, so maybe, maybe five by 12 unit. Um, that literally sits right above the garage, has a couple of bedrooms, a bathroom and a kitchen and laundry oh, in that's, it. That sounds huge, actually. 70 square metres, it's a, it's a decent size apartment, really, yes. okay. that, that sits on top of a house. Uh, hang on, on top of a house or on top of a garage? Uh, well, on top of the garage, part of a house. Right, okay. Um, and structurally, can a, the foundations of a garage take a building like that? Absolutely. You've got to take the roof trusses out and you've got to build a floor and engineer it. You've got to fireproof it so that if the house caught fire, the unit wouldn't be affected or, or they'd have time to evacuate and vice versa. Um, so there's, there's great technology to make sure that it's completely safe. It um, just up, operates like its own little house. Where's the entry point to the Fonzie flat? Uh, that can vary, but you typically see them coming up the side of the garage. So it's, it's you've got the front door for the main house and then the entry to the garage down the side um, pathway. Mm. You're listening to James Fitzgerald. He's the managing director of the JLF Group, pitching the Fonzie flat as part of the housing crisis solution. Are there other cities or other countries that particularly um, do Fonzie flats? Absolutely. You know, the, the pretty much any developed city or country that's got a uh, pop, growing population faces an issue with affordability and infrastructure. So their solution typically is to try and bring in some density in and around places that have already got good public transport, good community infrastructure. So places like San Francisco, uh, you could walk down a lot of streets in San Francisco and see garages that have been converted to self-contained units. Obviously, San Francisco is a little bit different because it's the birthplace of Uber and some of these big technology companies. So people, people don't need their garages anymore, but it, it's a version of it. Uh, and then places like Toronto in uh, Canada, most people, if they're a first home buyer, buy a three-storey uh, house or townhome on a 100-square-metre block. And the only way they can afford the mortgage because the house price is so expensive is they convert the bottom floor to its own unit and rent it out for some income to subsidise the mortgage. Mm. So it's been done. Yes, and so you see that that's a possibility in Brisbane. So the person living in the Fonzie flat is separate to the main household? Absolutely. So on the 10th of March, very, very recently, a week or two ago, the Brisbane City Council legalised granny flats and Fonzie flats. You can build a granny flat or Fonzie flat uh, without having to get an approval. You just have to make sure it meets the building setbacks and, and all that sort of thing. But you could be building in, in a month or two if, if you wanted to. Um, win for the tenants who are really struggling at the moment for affordable rental accommodation. Win for the homeowner because it gives an income that can subsidise the increased interest rates and, and that sort of thing. And I think it's, it's probably the most amazing opportunity for empty nesters because it gives them an income in retirement. Mm. So how do they set up? I mean, if you own the home, do you rent it out yourself on your own terms, set the price and whatnot? 
Oh, that, that depends on who you are, I guess, you know, but, but, but I'm sure there's property agents out there that could rent it out for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hasn't been done a lot in Australia. Most commonly it's been done where someone lives in the house and chooses to deal with the tenant directly, um, you know, wanting to make sure that it's someone that, that um, they can sort of live nearby to. Um, but yeah, you could you could definitely have a property manager manage all that if you didn't want the hassle and stress. Yeah, love to hear from you this morning. If you're listening, maybe you're familiar with the Fonzie flat or the granny flat concept. Have you done it, whether it's here or in another city or another country? How did it work out? Tell me that story. 1300 222 612 or you can send me a text 0467 922 You mentioned that there's been a change as of the 10th of March that makes it easier in Brisbane City Council to build a granny flat or a Fonzie flat. So what was that change? So every council in South East Queensland doesn't allow you to rent out a uh, granny flat to an unrelated third party. You can only rent it out to family. The Queensland State Government, you might remember it was, it was a few months ago, said we're going to legalise granny flats. Uh, the challenge a lot of uh, homeowners were facing is, well, that only had a two-year currency. So what happens to me after that two years where the council could breach me and it might not be deemed legal? Brisbane City Council took matters into their own hands. I think it's a great initiative. Uh, Gave people the certainty and said, no, we're going to change the whole town plan to allow this and follow exactly what the state government has done, which just gives homeowners certainty. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unfortunately, no no other council is giving that level of certainty yet. Um, Gold Coast, Logan, Morton, you've got to uh, rent it out to uh, a party who's related to you. Uh, But, I mean, Brisbane City Council is the biggest council in the Southern Hemisphere. If they do it, I think a lot of councils, if not all, will follow very shortly. Mm, I don't know how. I'm going to drive around the city and look at the homes differently now to think, oh, could that be a Fonzie flat option? Because I think lots of people sort of have, have an understanding of the granny flat as maybe mm. something might be detached. It might be if you've got a bigger block, it's it's like a second sort of dwelling there. Have you actually, I mean, do you have any figures on the potential of Fonzie flats of how many there could be in Brisbane? Yeah, because I, I live this every day, Rebecca, I'm probably a little bit more um, looking for it than, than you might be, but they're, they're everywhere. You, you know, I live in Cannon Hill and, and there's a bunch of them through Carina and Cooparoo, uh, a lot of those bigger blocks that have got separate granny flats, a lot of them getting mm. five or $600 a week. Yeah, I, still, a, I know the granny flats, but I'm talking about the Fonzie flat, the, the idea of building over the garage. Yes. I'm trying to imagine the, the houses where that can happen. But no, absolutely. Well, sorry, same thing. Oh, same thing. Oh, when I say granny flat, I, I mean both. I, Don't I probably mix throw up them. your Fonzies with your grannies, James. I know. <laughs> Fonzie would be rolling yeah. in his uh, grab. No, look, you see a lot of them. Yeah. Um, they literally just look like they're part of the house. They're done so well. Um, credit to the builders out there and, and the homeowners. You you wouldn't even know if, if you weren't looking for it. Mm, okay. Well, and, of course, that's the next challenge is finding the builder to do it, but that's another discussion. All right. Well, James, good to meet you this morning. And, of course, you're about to have another little uh, another person move into your place, aren't you? Yes, yeah. We, we've got an exp- first child. <gasps> so Hannah, my wife, lo- my lovely supportive wife, who's <laughs> let me come in and do this on our due date. Thank you, Hannah. I'm not far. I'm not far. I'm, I'm on call. I've had the phone on uh, on loud mode if you did call. Imagine if we had a phone call in the middle of this interview. Baby's coming. That would be a story. Well, you have got so much love coming your way um, and all the very best with the baby. It's sort of fitting. Extra person coming into your household. Well, you're encouraging everyone to potentially have an extra person living attached to their household. The Fonzie flat. James, good to meet you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Rebecca.